Um, so it really has um, challenged a couple of assumptions that we had for when we started um, at this moment. So the first assumption that really um, has been challenged is that learning and teaching in the creative arts is led by those in formal learning and teaching leadership roles. What we're discovering is that those people who are in those formal roles are not seen by many creative arts people as their leaders and a lot of those people don't actually have a creative arts background and are generally over a creative arts discipline. So it's very interesting um, who, the leadership aspect. The second assumption is that those in learning and teaching leadership positions will be really eager to join an online network. Um, as you can see from the statistics that we pre presented, that isn't the case. Um, so while 80% said, yes, we want this network, we'd love to join, blah, da, 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 in reality, in practice, it's, it's the conversion rate is much lower. Yeah, the use of participatory design to inform the purpose and direction for the network would be collectively determined and would quickly emerge. Um, it wasn't quick, <laughs> that's sure. And really, the purpose and direction for the network ended up being content. I guess it was um, done through participatory design. Uh, however, that was a safe option and we thought there would be much much more engagement about shaping what the, the online network would be and what its purpose was. Um, assumption 4, the technology would enable a site to be developed that was fluid, extensible, remixable, customizable and agile. Based on this approach, it, it was really hard to find um, a software platform that would accommodate all of the things that we wanted to do. And we didn't have a huge budget, really. Uh, but you know, we don't have programming skills, and so we had to find something that uh, was most suitable. Yeah. And um, and it was reasonably fluid and extensible, but you know, you get so far, and there was just something that the software couldn't allow you to do. Yeah. And the last one was around again our initial assumptions about this collaborative network. You know, the ideal vision of everybody wanting to share and distribute it and technology will help us do it. Um, it, it, got, it was the least used area of the site and Tendis kept incredible statistics on hits and days and when what topic went up, what, you know, what happened and who's looking at what page and um, really the collaborative side of it online hasn't um, taken off yet. But it could also just be the cycle of trust that you need to build up and we're really doing a bit of analysis of why this might be the case. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we feel a bit like this elephant on the on a ball where we, we're really balancing and we're trying things and thinking hard and drawing from the literature and putting it into practice. So it's a very uh, practice based approach and um, it's it, it does feel a bit we do feel a bit like the elephant though where um, you never quite you know your your Assumption may not quite play out or may need much more work than, than you thought it would. Hmm. Now, where are we going? So we have the opportunity now to revisit um, what the network is because the Creative Arts Learning and Teaching Network has been formed um, with Jonathan Holmes, the Dean. And the Dean's Council, yeah. so they want this network to run a bit like um, the Dash Network does or the Business Deans and have the Associate Deans Learning Teaching underneath uh, that group or alongside that group and, um, and created at a face-to-face -face meeting uh, in April, voted and said that they'd like to merge with this Creative Arts Learning and Teaching Network. Yeah, so it was a really good and thoughtful conversation because people were very uh, honest and they said, look, we can't be split, we can't be in a, two networks, we, we need to really think about things. And because um, the deans are forming a network, it made perfect sense that this, the created now fits under the deans. So we're back to the model of how the business deans work, how the education deans work, where there is a a dean's network and then the associate dean network will be under 
under or a part of it. Yeah. And the Creative Arts Learning and Teaching Network met and, and they agreed to that they like, yeah. created some interest them, so that was lovely. Yeah. So we um, are still though, con oh, what's the word? But grappling with this notion of who is leading um, the creative arts though. So we, we may have all these networks, but it's a very hard to find out who is actually in the leadership role, who should be in the room, um, and how do we actually get the people that are actually the leaders. And it's, it's a very interesting uh, task at the moment for us to try and unravel where leadership for the creative arts comes because what we're uncovering is that it is not quite as clear cut as it is in the sciences and the business where there's a monolithic kind of discipline and underneath across 37 universities is the school of business and you've got accounting, law, and creative arts is very, very um, differently distributed and Timby's done a bit of work on that. Yeah, I was just going to say it, it was reflected too in the Creative Arts Learning and Teaching Network meeting uh, that 11 out of the 35 participants were in those formal learning and teaching roles. The rest were in the discipline as leaders of learning and teaching. So it, it does beg the question of well, where, what is the place then for those informal and learning and teaching roles? Uh, well, you're so Robert, about leadership. Oh, come on, Robert, you think it's no longer true in the sciences? What, what are you finding? Uh, the arts and the sciences are more monolithic and uh, it's clearer. Well, uh, I'm not finding that. Uh, I'm working at Macquarie University and we're finding that uh, the, the innovation and the leadership is not coming from the top, it's coming from the sides, it's coming from sessional staff, it's, becoming, it's coming from staff who want to turn the academic enterprise into a completely online experience. Um, it's, the environment's changing very rapidly. So I, I don't think it's as uh, top down. I mean, you may have a charismatic individual who mm -hmm. has a vision and, and is, is inclusive, but generally speaking, we're finding that it's, it's now broadening mm -hmm. out and that's largely because it's, it's technology driven and um, those that take up the technology quickly tend to see the creative potential of it. Um, as I say, I'm not working specifically in the creative arts, but I, I mainly work through the science faculty. So. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot going on, I think, in terms of learning and teaching leadership in programs and schools. But because universities are so massive now, um, those people who sit on the committees, the learning and teaching committees at university or, or look at funding for different schools and faculties, um, there seems to be yeah, a little bit of disconnect perhaps yeah. between yeah. people in those roles who could advocate for the creative arts um, and what's happening perhaps in the schools. Yeah. So I think yeah, Robert's heartening to hear that um, because there is this whole thing of where is innovation happening and yeah, it's, it's amazingly dispersed but we're, we're of the view that if we are in a university structure and people have been charged with roles, then we feel that they need to enact those roles for everybody. So if there's a faculty with, under which creative arts falls, the person who's the dean in learning and teaching needs to love everybody that they have under them, not just the discipline group that they came from. And that's what we seem to be finding. A lot of deans, maybe, you know, over a science faculty, maybe mechanical engineers or maybe chemists, so let me take, and then how do the physicists and the geophysicists and the, all the others feel and are they being equally led and equally understood and, do you know what I mean? And represented upwards. Yeah. So we, we want that person to play a huge, important role in, in, in being the, the oil in the machinery to, to link bottom up and top down and, and um, sideways. sideways. <laughs> uh, well, yes, that's true. What, and, what do you uh, think? The associate dean that I, I work with, she's uh, particularly interested in hearing all voices. She's, she's um, you know, from the earth sciences, but mm -hmm. uh, she certainly incorporates and encourages um, innovation that comes from others, other departments and schools that are outside her particular domain. Because uh, in that area, you're looking at innovation and in, in, in delivery and engagement. I mean, there, 
there are much bigger issues. The Learning and Teaching Centre at the university runs a foundations course in, in learning and teaching, which invariably has people from all faculties, uh, from, from arts, from business, from, from human sciences, from science, etc. And, and they, they commonly find a language of innovation that uh, crosses those disciplines because um, engaging students, I've just mm. lost the screen today, uh, engaging students is something which is in and yeah. of itself um, a craft and you can't uh, um, you know, ignore the, the, the craft work that happens in other parts of the university because often that feeds very much into your own teaching practice.